to Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul, and my co-host is Justin Baker, joining me via Skype. Justin, how are you this fine, beautiful, 55-degree Sunday afternoon? Dude, doing great. Talk about the heat wave. I, uh, I rather enjoyed coming out of church to that. Yeah, if there's people that are, live in Florida or, well, really anywhere south of Michigan, they're like, dude, it's 50 degrees. Who cares? It's been 50 degrees for two months now. Well, it hasn't been here, so we did have snow yesterday. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. There was totally was like flurries and stuff. Actually, I was just out back raking leaves, and there's kind of this area where leaves collect along the side of mine and my neighbor's fence. It's like the side of my house, but then his fence comes along, so I just go into his kind of his area and scoop up stuff too. And underneath all those leaves, there was just ice, all this snow <laughs> and ice still under there here we are it's been above freezing for weeks now uh for the most part well with that said of course we are here to talk about hockey we're here to talk about the national hockey league and uh rather than you know doing our typical let's talk about what's going on in the playoffs because obviously there's a lot to talk about i mean we could we could spend uh, a good chunk of time talking about how the Winnipeg Jets thumped the Nashville Predators 5 nothing last night. We could talk about how the Maple Leafs can't beat Georgiev on the Rangers. <laughs> Just why? Uh, if the Rangers were playing in the Leafs the first playing the Leafs the first round, I'd be terrified. Uh, but <laughs> Henrik Lundqvist would have to sit. Uh, I mean, the, I, there's just been there's been quite a few like the the Calgary Flames have pulled ahead uh, by six points. Now looks like they've locked up the Pacific division, I would say, uh, I, I think that they're, it's almost a sure thing that they'll win the Pacific and, uh, the Boston Bruins, they're going to have home ice advantage against the Maple Leafs in the first round, barring something pretty disastrous on the Leafs part that would require the Habs catching them, which down seven points with, uh, seven games left to go. That doesn't, doesn't sound likely to me. So it's a pretty crazy ride in the West, but instead of focusing on all that, we're going to take a little step back. You know, as we head into the playoffs, sometimes, Justin, you know, we, we, need to, we need to just pull away from the here and now and look at the bigger picture. So with that said, we are going to talk all 31 teams and uh, throw out the name that we think most likely to, uh, I guess, a player to be retired by that team or their jersey or, you know, I guess, yeah, their jersey retired for that team uh, at the end of their career. So with that said, we're just going to start at the very bottom of the standings. That's the order we're going to go. We're going to go bottom of the standings and we'll roll all the way up. I mean, it's not in any particular order of players, just, uh, you know, Ottawa, you've you've sucked this year and, and you need a reason to feel good. And this is this maybe will help. Who knows? Is there <laughs> anybody on the Senators that, that might deserve this there might be yeah there might be i uh boy i would think maybe after a long career uh assuming that you know everybody stays with their team for quite a lengthy period of time i i would think that a guy by the name of brady kachuk could very well get a jersey retired okay all right brady kachuk uh yeah hasn't done anything yet (laughs) (laughs) right I mean, he's only 19 years old, 40 points, you know, in, in 60 some games here. And, uh, or was it 39? I can't, it doesn't matter. Uh, to me, 39. he, he's what I'm sorry. Oh, 39. I said, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. To me, Brady Kachuk seems like the type of guy who, who he has that heart and soul, you know, kind of factor to him where, you know, you can really rally around this, this type of guy, right? Not, no, not necessarily that you can build a team around him, but somebody that players will gravitate towards. And I think really, uh, you know, can, they feed off this guy's energy. And I think, you know, um, you know, for the next 10, 15 years, however long he's in Ottawa, he, he could be that type of player. You don't think Bobby Ryan's jersey is going to get retired? <laughs> uh, I, uh, I mean, I would have to lean, you know, I, maybe the more obvious answer is Thomas Shabbat, uh, who looks yeah. like he's going to be, you know, your next top player on this team. I mean, it, Maybe again, you're right. You don't build a team around him necessarily, but pretty darn close. It's looking like. Yeah, he is. He he to me is one of the better young defensemen in the NHL right now, and I think, um, you know, 
after losing Eric Carlson and all that drama that happened, I think they got they got themselves a guy that they can legit say, hey, we we've got a, a guy who could be a potential number one here for us moving forward. Yeah, uh, the only other name on this team, I guess, is Craig Anderson. He does have the most wins uh, by a by a long shot uh, out of any Ottawa goaltender. It is it is surprising. Now I know the Ottawa Senators have only been around since uh, the the early nineties, but Craig Anderson, who has played almost four hundred games for the Senators, has uh, one hundred and eighty nine wins. Uh, next is Patrick Laleem with 146 and then the next one is Ron Tugnet at 72 Ray Emery 71 and Damian Rhodes at 65 uh, Brian Elliott wow. actually has 59 wins for the Senators too uh, and don't don't forget Dominic Hoshik with 28 wins he actually probably has the best winning percentage <laughs> like he, he won 28 out of 43 games so that's that's, good. Uh, that's, pre- that's pretty good yeah so but it, just interesting you know a team that's been around for uh for about 30 years, really only has two goaltenders that played longer than uh, than a couple seasons. I mean, at 397 games, Laleem at 283, Rhodes 181, Tugnut 166. I mean, once you're once you're under uh, around 166, you're at what maybe three years, I guess. There, yeah. so not uh, not long in the tooth for the goaltenders, I guess, in Ottawa, and and really they fell into Craig Anderson, who was in Colorado, and. Uh, just wasn't really getting his opportunity there, and so they were able to scoop him up, and it ended up being one of the best acquisitions that franchise ever had. Yeah, it kind of reminds me a little bit about the the Dubnik situation in Edmonton going to Minnesota a little bit. Yes, yes, very, very similar. I think we, you know, you may see at the end of his career that he's well. Is he already the highest winning Minnesota goaltender? <laughs> Pro- probably. Um, okay, we've spent enough time here in Ottawa. Uh, more than their 58 points deserves. I think we should just go <laughs> however many points they have. That's how many seconds we spent on them. But we've already oh. we've already blown through that. Uh, the Los Angeles Kings. I think this one's a little easier. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think there's obvious two names that you could talk about. Uh, but for me, I'm going to go with Anze Kopitar. Uh, love this guy's game. You know, at both ends of the ice, and he is. He is, you know, a heart and soul type player, and there's a reason too. I mean, obviously, Dustin Brown was was a, an okay captain, in my opinion, not great, not bad, but not good. And uh, you know, they needed a change of the leadership, and I think Kopitar clearly was, you know, is a leader for this team. Yeah, I agree. Um, he is tenth all in uh, active points leaders with 881 points. Uh, I mean. You know, some of this does come down to some. You need to have significant numbers. I don't know how many, how many players. This would be an interesting thing. If if you know the answer, you can find it uh, at OT Hockey Talk. Send it to us because I, I don't feel as though I, I have the gumption to do this. But any player that's in a team's rafters that isn't in the Hockey Hall of Fame, I Ooh. I have to imagine there's very few of them. Because you, you got to think, like, first off, if a player is in the Hall of Fame and he's there, you know, I know hockey isn't really, uh, it's not like baseball where you go into the Hall of Fame wearing a particular team's jersey. Uh, but, it, I mean, it sort of sort of is, right? Like, you, you think Gretzky, you think he's in the Hall of Fame because what he did with the Oilers, not because what he did with the Blues, right? So, I mean, these guys, if, if you have a guy whose main contribution in his career was your team, you know, he's got to be at the top of the list to have his jersey raised, right? Like, I don't think the Red Wings have anyone in the rafters that's not in the Hall of Fame. So, yeah. I mean, barring maybe some of these newer teams, it's it's fair to say, you know, the the San Jose Sharks at this point maybe don't have anybody in the Hall of Fame. But you, you have to think Patrick Marlowe's going in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, Joe Thornton's going in the Hall of Fame. And they're going to both go in as Sharks. So, yeah. so the Sharks will have guys, uh, but they're just not there yet. They may retire. Like Patrick Marlowe retires. I think he's going in the rafters in San Jose whenever he does within sure, a year. Sure. You know, like, well, okay, I lied. Uh, isn't Datsuk, isn't his jersey in the rafters? No, no, no. Is, no. Not, is Zetterberg's? It is not yet. No, okay, yeah. So, oh, they had a Zetterberg night and a Datsuk night. That's right. Yes, I'm thinking of those, you know, those little honor honor nights. But yeah, I guess it wasn't to have a, a jersey race. Uh, okay, so L.A. Let's go to Detroit. Anybody on Detroit's active roster that you think 
could be in the rafters. Yeah, I think, you know, you can look at young guys and you could say maybe Dylan Larkin has that possibility. You know, he is definitely um, lined up to be the next captain of this this hockey team here. And uh, so to me, this is a guy that's going to be around the franchise for a long time if Detroit has their way. But uh, I'm going to go a guy who's pretty close to retiring, and that's Nicholas Cronwall. Okay. Uh, yeah, Cronwall is one of those guys that, to me, you'll remember him forever because he embodied hard-nosed hockey in Detroit. Uh, for, oh, absolutely. He was kind of the second wave, you know, after the grind line type of guys, after Draper and uh, those guys left, you were left with Nicholas Cronwall. He's the one who kind of carried on the tradition. He, honestly, Nicholas Cronwall, I think, is what we all saw Konstantinov's career becoming. You know, Konstantinov sure. was, was a phenomenal top four defenseman in the National Hockey League when he... Uh, when he was hurt in the car accident and his career was was uh, ended, but I, I mean I think that Cronwall played that out exactly how it may have played out for Konstantinov had he been given the chance. Yeah, I can't even tell you how many times I, I watch Cronwall go along the boards and just somebody has their their head down and boy he would just line you up and I, I remember seeing Martin Havlat for example in the Blackhawks man his ar- his right arm just went straight up in the air didn't fall down. And he was he was out cold and boy that was that was something Wings fans certainly enjoyed. And did you know uh, what was it? Yeah, I, I think I read yesterday that Konstantinov. Speaking of, he holds the record uh, for best plus minus in a season for the Red Wings at plus sixty. Wow, nice. Ron Hainsey's getting close too. <laughs> yes, he is actually. Uh, okay, let's go, New Jersey Devils. Uh, only one on here. I'll, I'll throw. I see. I hesitate with Taylor Hall. One fantastic year, uh, a free agent at the end of next year. Does he re-sign in New Jersey? If he doesn't, then obviously we're we're not. This conversation is done. If he does, uh, maybe there's a chance. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think I'm still on the fence. I think I'm almost fifty fifty if he re-signs because I mean, let's face it, he could. He's easily the leader of that team. He is going to be the point producer, and they're going to basically open the checkbook for him. But it's whether or not he wants to sit around and wait for this team to, you know, retool and get the pieces to win. Because right now, it's it's looking like it's going to be a long time before they're competitive again. The only reason why I think he might is because when he was traded from Edmonton in New Jersey, it was a pretty public thing that he was having a really tough time. Uh, readjusting to a new place, and so I wonder if he resigns there simply because. Uh, not simply because, but a big reason that he doesn't want to leave. He's he sure. set down some roots again, and he doesn't want to do this again. You know, maybe or maybe it's the flip side. He goes, eh, I'm used to it now. I could leave here, and it'd be fine. Yeah, and let's face it too. I mean, that Jersey, New York area is not a bad place to to live and and your career. So there you go. Yeah, and I don't think that Nico Heischer is going to end up being a player whose jerseys resigned. I hope I'm wrong for <laughs> Devils fans' sake, but he just doesn't look like he's going to be that high level of impact player uh, that maybe people were hoping that he would be. Uh, let's go New York Rangers who are up next. Uh, if the Leafs have their way, it'll be Georgiev, uh, <laughs> which I just want to call him George, Georgiev. Yeah, but, I do too. All the but time. Georgiev sounds, it sounds like you're like you sneezed kind of Georgiev, <laughs> you know, you could see that or, or that's like what you, when someone sneezes, that's what you say to them. Instead of like, bless you, you're like, you're give. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I, this one's pretty easy, though. I'll, I'll, yeah, Mark Stahl, of course. Mark's absolutely best, <laughs> best plus minus in the history of the Rangers. Uh, your boy, Henrik Lundqvist. The king. Best dressed player going into the Hall of Fame someday. Yes, he is. And I, oh boy, he, he, I hope he maybe next year decides, okay, you know what, go ahead and trade me to a team that's contending, even if i got to play backup role, because he's one of those guys that he, I just want to see him win a cup, just like Roberto Luongo. It's it's sad to see guys with that much success and that good at their position never win a cup. It just it breaks my heart. Well, there's 31 teams, so not all of them are going to win a cup. That's true. Uh, Buffalo Sabres. Ooh. I, I think I'm going to lean towards Jack Eichel. <laughs> sure looking like he's going to be that guy. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, easy. That's an easy one. 
I that is, and you could think... even throw Darlene's name in at this point. I think he's he's proven he's going to be that good of a defenseman right sure, now. Sure, sure. I would I would only stipulate that Jack Eichel has signed an eight year deal there, so That's he's going to be there for a good chunk. You know, by the time that deal's up, he's there for eleven years, which would put him in in the way that he's he's going with goals and you know having those. I, I think that's going to put him. Uh, right up with the best Sabres of all time if he continues scoring the way that he is. Uh, Darlene, though, could be the highest scoring Sabres defenseman ever uh, pretty quickly, <laughs> seeing as he's uh, he's already broken Bobby Orr's rookie season point total. So we'll see if uh, if that continues. Let's go to the Anaheim Ducks. There's a couple players on there that, that are interesting. Uh, obviously, we know Getzlaff, Perry. Is there a chance that they retire both of their jerseys? Or none, or one. Get slaps. I would say probably eighty percent chance his gets retired, maybe even higher. Uh, Corey Perry, I would lean towards fifty-fifty because he he fell off so quickly. You know, over these last few years, I think um, you know Getzlaff is still producing at a pretty good rate for his age, and I, I don't see Getzlaff, you know, really, you know, taking that dive off the deep end like Corey Perry has. However, I would also throw out John Gibson's name because to me he could be probably the best goaltender since you know I, I mean honestly Guy he could be Bear. the best goaltender since Guy Bear <laughs> yeah I was just thinking that <laughs> or J.S. Jaguar J.S. Jaguar so yeah I, I would I would agree yeah I, mean, I don't the goaltending positions are a hard one because I get, those guys can fall off too you know you just never know uh, I think that with when it comes to Corey Perry, if given enough separation, we're gonna look back and we're gonna go. I mean, this guy averaged over thirty goals a year for about ten straight seasons, almost ten straight, a nine straight season. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Where he was over that course, he averaged about thirty-five goals a season. You know, he had a fifty-goal season. Uh, there's a fifteen-goal season in there, but it was only in forty-four games. So I'm saying that's about a thirty-goal season. Uh, so I mean, 43 one year. I mean, the guy was unreal for a decade for the for the Ducks, and they won a cup with him as a pretty significant piece. Yeah. So so I think I think that'll play in there. But you got to wonder, does this team retire? I mean, is I I think. Uh, I'm trying to think who's in the rafters for Anaheim right now. I, I got to think both those guys are going up there. Mr. Solani. I mean, but if you know, let's let's say he he reti- Corey Perry retires in a in two years, maybe he will. You know, he's he's been so all over the place with injuries. He may just call it a career. I, I think that he still gets he'll get some sort of recognition. Not sure what though. Uh, okay, let's go Vancouver Canucks. Ooh. This one will be interesting. You can throw out a couple names here, but um, outside of the obvious, I, I want to ask you about a guy by the name of Alexander Edler. What do you think the chances of him retiring, getting his number retired? No, there? because in reality, yes, he was he was there when they were uh, can, a Stanley Cup con- contender. Um, yes, but I just don't think that he's he's done enough. Uh, I mean, when you look at his, he he really he, the year that they went to the finals, uh, he was he was pretty good. He had he had about a three year stretch, 40, 37, 42, 33, 49. So a four year stretch of uh, averaging about forty points a year. Since then, he's he only had two seasons above thirty points, and so I, I would say that the bulk of his work hasn't been super impressive, and it's mostly been during a time when. They haven't been very good. So I think people are just going to want to forget. I'm sure that he'll have a bobblehead night or something when he retires. You know, they'll do something <laughs> for him when he retires. But I just don't see his jersey going up. I, I do think that Elias Pet- Pedersen has a strong chance of that happening when all is said and done. Yeah, I would agree. I think yeah, he is going to continue his fine career. And if he keeps it, keeps going at the pace that he is, it, that's no question there. Cool. Let's just skip the Edmonton Oilers because it's going to be McDavid. Uh, Clearly. <laughs> let's go Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, outside, okay, here's the question. Outside of Taves and Kane, will they raise anyone else's 
jersey to the rafters. We know both those guys are going. Yeah, and I, I think because, I mean, so you look at Kane, right? Obviously, he has the point totals to go along with the three rings, and Taves has just got that incredible two-way game. But I think because of the rings, I think there's a strong chance that Duncan Keith gets his number retired as well. Yeah, Duncan Keith has been very good. Right right now, you've got, well, I think, six what, six players hanging in the rafters for the Blackhawks. Tony Esposito, Stan Makita, Bobby Hull, and uh, Denny Savard. Oh, so I guess there's four. Is that right? No, there's more. Glenn Hall, and then Pierre Pilot and Keith Magnuson both wore the same numbers, and both theirs is... Uh, is tied up there. So, so that's what six. Yep. Six guys have their jerseys retired. Uh, my get, and all those are basically from the same era. That was the like few Stanley cups that the Blackhawks had before this one. You know, those guys were on the 61 team, most of them. And so, yeah, you got to think that it's, it's going to be Taves, Kane and Keith, maybe yep. Crawford. Oh boy. It, it really depends on how the next few years go for him. You know, obviously he's going, he still has, you know, enough left in the tank, but it's just the health factor. If he can stay healthy enough to, you know, to extend his career out a few more years, there's a strong possibility of that. Yeah, it'll, I think it'll just, I mean, he, it's not like he's going to be the leader in, uh, in anything because, Tony Esposito has 418 wins. Crawford sitting at 242. So, I mean, Crawford, they do like their goalies. They do have two goalies whose numbers are retired, Glenn Hall and Esposito. But uh, Crawford's still another 34 wins away from Glenn Hall. And it's it's kind of on the, you know, teetering on the edge. Is he going to be able to continue his career at a high level? Or is he just now a backup goalie? Yeah, I would agree. And uh, I still think he's got plenty left in the tank. It's just, it's again, it's it's whether or not he can stay healthy for me. The Florida Panthers are an interesting one because Roberto Luongo has done, he's been there twice. Certainly Luongo is going to be a Hall of Fame goaltender when all is said and done. Uh, not necessarily even just because of his numbers, because some of that's tainted. He's played on a bad Florida team at times. But his, also his personality and his... Uh, I think that he is he's a public figure enough to garner support to get him into the Hall of Fame. I, I really think that he ends up in the Hall of Fame because he's just that likable guy, not to mention the fact that he kind of had this resurgence uh, coming back as, you know, I mean, the guy's, the guy's ancient and he's still managing to produce even though he's struggled through injuries this year. Um, I think we're all willing to write those ones off, but... Uh, I don't see the Panthers not taking the opportunity to raise Luongo's jersey to the rafters. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. He basically owns every single Florida Panther record, most wins, most games played. I mean, you na- I mean, he even owns the losses record just because of his longevity. And like you said, playing with so many terrible teams. And uh, yeah, so to me, he's he's the obvious, uh, you know, candidate on this team to go up. Uh, there are only two uh, things in the rafters at Florida Panthers Arena. Ooh. I am looking at their website right now, so if this is wrong, it's not my problem. But uh, <laughs> H. Wayne Huizinga, he was uh, the he was the the guy that originally was awarded the franchise when they first joined the league, and their first inaugural president, William A. Torrey. Those are the two That's it. two things in the rafters. I I'm very surprised by that. I you know I would think that you would maybe see John Van Beesbroke, but I guess he just wasn't there long enough. And really, their only significant season was you know kind of a, a ragtag bunch of veterans. I mean, yeah, you did have Pavel Bure who was there for a little while, but I don't think he was there long enough to really consider him a Florida Panther. Uh, at least, yeah, I would I would definitely agree with that for sure. So they're going to take the opportunity to put Luongo's jersey in the rafters, along with Barkov when he retires. Yeah, yeah, that's that's no question there. Maybe even Huberdeau and Trocek, <laughs> just to <laughs> fill, uh, just to make it not look so empty up there. Just put them all in there. There you go. Uh, let's go with the Minnesota Wild. It's an interesting 
interesting team right now for them. But is there anybody that you could see up in the rafters? Uh, boy, I, I think right now I would probably lean towards Miko Koivu. Um, you know, again, yeah. I don't know where his health is, where he's going to be next year, but um, he is the career leader in games played for that franchise, most assists, and number one in points right now. And um, let's see where I can't remember where he was on goals, but I think he's a little further he's down. Got, oh, yeah, number he's got two. 201 goals. So, yeah. So, not far behind Gabrick. Gabrick is the, yeah, the leader. Yeah. Yeah. So, to me, this is. This is the guy. I mean, yeah, I could see some other players maybe on this team further on down the road. Maybe, uh, you know, a Ryan Suter or maybe even a Spurgeon if – or I'm sorry, a, a Dumba if things go well. Uh, but for right now, it's the obvious pick for me is Koivu. If you hear dogs barking in the background, that's my dogs because the window's open because it's nice outside. But there, I think every neighborhood dog is outside and they're pissed at each other. Or, or they <laughs> well, love each other. It. I don't know. You can't hear it. That's good. Yeah. Um, the Arizona Coyotes. Ooh. Anybody, anybody out there? Clayton Keller, Oliver Ekman Larson, probably. Uh, yeah, OEL. I think if anybody, it's it's got to be OEL. There's really nobody else on this team. I mean, Clayton Keller. He might end up being a Nico Heischer type guy, where he's just he's he's good, not great. Um, and then outside of that, I mean. There's really nobody else you can just point to and be like, okay, he's he's got a chance. And I mean, we could see Alex Galchenyuk if maybe he, you know, comes back and stays nah. healthy throughout his career. No, nah. nah. I okay. don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> just shot that down. Quick. Um, I think OEL, his longevity there. I mean, by the end of his, by the end of the, all this, he'll have been there for what, like, fifteen years. Oh yeah. yeah so I, I think I think that's where. Uh, it's actually an easier one than you than you'd think, but also the fact that they see. I would say that teams like the Arizona Coyotes, there there isn't as high of a bar. A, they've never won a cup. They've barely won a playoff series. You know, they you can count how many playoff series they've won on at one hand. So, I think that the bar is lower, and so you're going to go, who's been with us forever and was really good. Like that's the bar. Whereas the next team we're going to, the Philadelphia Flyers, that's definitely not the bar. Right. So for the Flyers, uh, I mean, I, I you know, a Claude Giroux is is the obvious pick. Uh, I just don't see a Voracek ending up on there, just because I think he's played second fiddle to Giroux, and that's that's just is what it is. Anyone else that you think could end up in those rafters in Philadelphia, though? Mm. Um, depending on how their career turns out, you could maybe point to a maybe a Shane Gostisphere. I don't know. That's a little tough. I mean, he does produce enough points. Um, you know, he 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 can be a consistent forty point guy for, on the back end, but you know, does he have the longevity to play at this team for a long time? I don't know. Um, but yeah, outside of that, it's 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 going to be tough to really pinpoint anybody outside of Giroux or Voracek to say maybe. You know, we'll see where Konechny goes, but for right now, I just I can't really see anybody else outside of Giroux. Yeah, and I think you're right. like that's a ama- I, I think Giroux, the guys put up points. There's there's no doubt about that. Uh, and he he's been the captain. They have been to the Stanley Cup Finals with him. Uh, unfortunately for Flyers fans, they didn't win, but uh, he's a, he's definitely made a dent. You know, he's he has. 757 points in 813 games. And so I think you're looking at a guy who chances are, I mean, he's, he's what he's uh 31, 32, 30, he's 30 years old. So let's say he goes for another five years. He, he should be able to be at, he should have a thousand points. And I think in this day and age, a thousand points is enough to garner you some like, okay, that guy was pretty darn good for us, especially in an era that, uh, we were really good or really bad at different times. So I, I think he definitely will. He'll get some sort of honor there. They only have six players retired. Eric Lindros, Bobby Clark, Bill Barber, Mark Howe, Bernie Perrant, and Barry Ashby. I actually Ooh. don't know who Barry Ashby is. Yeah, same. But, uh, you know, I'm I'm sure he was good. <laughs> uh he must he it looks like he was a defenseman for them when they won the Stanley Cup in the seventies. 
wow, I usually have heard of these players, but how is this? He must have. Did he die? He died. He died as a flyer. Yeah, he di- he died. He died very quickly. I don't know what happened to him. He became huh. an assistant coach. He died of leukemia. Interesting. Oh, sad. But he had his name added to the cup for a second time when they won their second. Okay. So, yeah. So, they, they won a cup. And, uh, huh, interesting. Okay. So, yeah, his number was retired. And now there's an award called the Barry Ashby Trophy awarded to the best defenseman of the Flyers each year. Wow. So. Oh, there you go. There it is. Uh, okay, anyways, enough of Barry Ashby. If you know uh, more about him, please tweet at us because, you know, we don't want to know more about him. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. What's happening? Colorado Avalanche. Let's let's run away from that quickly. We'll, yes. edit, we'll edit that out. No, we won't. We never edit anything out. It's fine. Uh, Colorado Avalanche. How many of these guys do you think we'll see in the rafters someday? Uh, I can go two, to be quite honest. I think, uh, you know, much like the top line of the Boston Bruins, I think, you know, Ratnan and McKinnon, Landeskog, those three guys right there are very dynamic. And I think they'll be around a long time. At least I think Colorado will do whatever it takes to keep them there for a long time. So not a bad trio to have there for a while. And uh, Landeskog, great leader. Um, Still, in my opinion, I think way too young to be a captain, but whatever, they did it. But McKenna to me is the the obvious pick, and whether or not one of those two other guys get in is, you know, up for debate. Yeah, uh, Joe Sackick, Peter Forsberg, Patrick Waugh, Adam Foot, Ray Bork, Ray Bork. Why is like one year? Uh, two, two years. I'm sorry. Yeah, he one he cup. was traded at the deadline. Two playoff. We'll say two playoff runs. Uh, he he was there for what maybe like 15 months, and right. his numbers retired there. So that's, I mean, I guess all you have to do is win a Stanley Cup in right. Colorado to, to get up there. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, eh, I, I guess, you know, they uh, they don't have any numbers from the Quebec Nordiques. You know, there was like a Michael Goulet or Peter, Peter Stastny could maybe be somebody who also is up there for that team. But, uh, at, you know, as maybe a, a salute to guys that came before because it was the same the same organization just switch names um, but i i think unless this team wins a stanley cup you're looking at one guy and it's mckinnon sure uh, unless well, i mean if ranton is as ridiculous as he is this year all all the time i mean it'd be tough to to keep him out of there uh the dallas stars anybody you know it's funny to me that Jamie Ben, he's the one with all the, with the lone MVP, but it was in a year where he had 87 points. He led the league, or he was the Art Ross Trophy winner, 87 right. points. And I, I just don't see him ending up in the Raptors, especially as long as their owner is who it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, Jamie Ben, he was he was good that year, and he snuck away with that trophy by the skin of his teeth. I think, what, four points in that last game? Yes, yes. Came uh, out of nowhere. And it's the lowest yeah. point total for a an Art Ross Trophy winner outside of lockout years. I think since sometime in the 60s or the 50s or something like that. Okay, there you go. Um, but yeah, you know what? For the way he likes to play that power forward type of game, I just don't see his style, his play you know, really going the distance in terms of production, right? So I would actually point towards a guy like Tyler Sagan much sooner than I would Jamie Benn, to be quite honest, because Sagan, he's a he's a great centerman, in my opinion, and he's, he's consistently puts up 70 points. So for a guy that consistently produces and I think will continue to produce for Dallas, you know, should no problem be able to get his name up in the rafter. But again, I think it's it's whether or not they can actually win in the playoffs at some point during their careers here. Yes, I would agree that that winning there is going to be important because they've won before. So there sure. is a bar. Uh, also, I yeah, Stan Makita, 87 points in 1967-68. So the, the first year of expansion when teams were uh, a little bit maybe not as deep 
they Ooh. they had an 87 point year but there was actually quite a few years in the 80s before that scoring just wasn't as high and they played less games uh let's go to the we're we're, we're in playoff teams now uh Ooh. well i lied the columbus blue jackets <laughs> they are outside of the playoffs if they were in the west they'd be in the playoffs uh we could talk about the columbus blue jackets which we will and but not not right now. Uh, other than the fact that we're going to talk about any players on their team that should have their jerseys retired. You know, I could see two guys potentially getting their jerseys retired. Um, on the back end, uh, Zach Wierenski and Seth Jones, to me, mm. are guys that have that chance. Yeah, yeah. And now, for this team, again, the there's no bar. I mean... Is Rick Na- Rick Nash isn't up there yet? I mean, he just retired. I would think that they'll do something for him. Sure. Uh, he he may not go to the rafters though. He didn't that, do anything significant for them. That is very true. Just a All bunch right, of regular say. season points, goals. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, if Panarin stayed and they were able to do something significant, I could see it. But yeah, I don't. I really. I don't think there's anyone on this current team that is going to go to the rafters unless Bobrovsky stays and dominates again. Then I can see it. If he stayed for another, you know, he signs the eight year deal and he stays. uh, Then I think we're talking about Bobrovsky. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not too far off. Um, Yeah. It's going to be tough though. I I just, I just don't think he stays after this season, but we'll see. Montreal Canadiens. Canadians. Oh, I, I think there's an obvious pick here on this team. Yeah, I, I think so too. Max Domi. CP3. <laughs> yes, good old Max Domi will have his number retired. No, um, that would be good old Carey Price. So, so I think we do see a goaltender maybe get his number retired at some point because he is, he's getting up there close to, I think, the all time wins record, right? Is it is it not? All pull that one up. time wins record. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. No, I mean not think, for the NHL, but for his. Team. Oh, Sorry, for, for Montreal. Team. I was like, I, I don't actually think. No, that. he is. He is number one. Yeah, he did pass Jacques Plant at three eighteen versus three fourteen now. So, yeah, he is up there. So yeah, he's got a little ways to go before he before he ends up the all time wins. Right, six hundred and some to go. I think. Yes, yes, I think. Well, he he needs to win another three hundred and eighteen. Right. Actually, if he if he doubles the wins in his career, he will still be thirty five wins away from Martin Broder. Oh boy, it's going to take some uh, some good Montreal teams here. Martin forward. Broder played one thousand two hundred and sixty six games as a goalie. Yeah, that's impressive. That's unreal. The next highest is actual actually Luongo at ten thirty nine. Wow. So he's still two hundred and. 27 games behind Broder. That's that's like another five seasons. Wow. At 60, at 60 games a season. <laughs> or 50 games a season. Oh, that's funny. That's a lot of games. Oh, okay, let's... Uh, Montreal's an easy one, I guess. Let's go to the St. Louis Blues. Not as easy as a pick. Yeah, this one might be a little tougher. Um, I'm going to let you take the reins on this one. Who do you think might... Might be the next. You know, I think it's. I think the name that I would I'd look at is Vladimir Tarasenko. Uh, he's been a phenomenal goal scorer for them, and that that can certainly punch you over the top. You know, goal when it when it comes to goals, the, that's truly what's at a premium. And maybe by the end of his career, he's you know top St. Louis scorer. Uh, if he can push Brett Hull, you know, Brett Hull wasn't there very super long time, but he scored a lot of goals. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think goal scoring definitely, uh, definitely helps a ton. And he's, he's going to have no shortage of goals throughout his career there in St. Louis. But I, another name, I, I kind of wonder, um, you know, on the back end and Alex Peter Angelo, you know, does he stay his career long enough there to maybe make a dent or is he even good enough to make a dent to get a name close to the rafters? Uh, see, if they if they were a Stanley Cup winning team, yes. Oh, by the way, uh, Tarasenko would need to score another 320 goals to tie Brad Hull for wow. his St. Louis Blues goal total. So, yeah, yeah, I don't I don't think he's going to touch that. 
mostly Probably. because he had a 72, an 86, a 70, a 54, a 57, 43, 42 goal seasons <laughs> at 41. <laughs> Insane. So goodbye. Yeah, you're not you're not catching a guy who in in three years has as more goals than you had your whole career. <laughs> yeah, arguably, arguably one of the top ten goal scorers of all time, I would say. Uh, but he he could he he could very well and and most likely will push Bertie Federko, who has the second most at three fifty two. Uh, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility to think that Tarasenko, uh, you know, stays in St. Louis and is able to score another one hundred and fifty goals. I, I think that that's. Likely, you know, 30 goals a year for the next five years. I think that that's definitely in the cards for him, which which would put him into some pretty legit, uh, legit territory. Although, you know, one thing, Peter Angelo is the fifth highest in uh, assists in the organization, and he is wow. creeping up on Al McKinnis and Brian Sutter with another 34 assists. So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, you know, when you look at numbers in and of themselves, Petrangelo is up there amongst some of the greatest defensemen to ever play uh, in the St. Louis Blues uniform. So uh, let's go with the Carolina Hurricanes, who have some pretty decent history, but not recent. Yeah, not recent. Um, boy, maybe. Do you? You know what? I, I know he's not currently with this team, but do you see the possibility of Cam Ward ever getting his number retired there? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Especially with the new owner good, who good, I good, think good. has looked at this and gone like things were backwards for a while and Cam Ward really wasn't Cam Ward was really good for a few years and he was rewarded with a fat contract after having a really fantastic playoff run. Uh and we've seen that before. And it yeah. rarely works out. And and it's not to say that he was <laughs> terrible, but he definitely was not uh, of the upper echelon of goaltenders for very long. Yeah, no, no, I, I would agree. And uh, for me with, with Carolina, though, with their current team, I think Sebastian Ajo has to be the name that I look at right now as a guy who could possibly do this. Um, a phenomenal two-way guy, and speed to burn, and he fits today's NHL quite well. And I think, um, you know, even though he started his career in Carolina on the wing, he's moved to center, and I think with centermen, it just, it to me, it ups the possibility of getting, you know, getting up there in points and getting your jersey retired, all that fun stuff. Yeah, I love it. You know, it's it's it is interesting to think the order that we did this in. We did we kind of just went in a random order, but what it's done is a lot of these teams uh either they have someone who's who's maybe obvious, but then they also because of how bad they are, we're looking at fifteen years down the road what might happen. Right. So it it's it's fun to think, you know, how does this all play out? Uh you got to wonder who, which one of these guys ends up with Stanley Cups, and uh, and a lot of that can change who ends up in the rafters. I mean, or, or you know, who ends up being a significant memory piece for fans for that team. I mean, right now, the Carolina Hurricanes haven't done anything since you know the the late two thousands, really. Uh, maybe Eric Stahl, when all is said and done, his name will go up in the rafters, maybe, uh, but. Other than that, you don't really have a whole lot that you're looking forward to over the next 10 years for players that are going to go up there. But you do have a bright future at this point, Shvetsnikov and, and Aho and, and they're really, I mean, they're 12th in the NHL. I mean, they're, they are finally at the point that I think we've been waiting for them to get to because of the defense that they've had. And so it's, it's exciting to see some of these teams that are, that are creeping up in, into the playoffs and that we haven't seen in the playoffs for a while. Uh, especially in their particular mode that they're in with the players that they're they're going with. So uh, with that said, let's go to the Nashville Predators who have a lot of good players. Do they have a player great enough to warrant being in the rafters? Yeah, I think Pekka Rene has to be the first pick to, for me. Um, you look at the, the trophies he's accumulated, the Vesna. I think he, I mean, would love to see that Stanley Cup ring. Um, which is going to, you know, I think for management, I think, you know, might hold them back a little bit. But I think right now, you know, he he's the guy. You got to you look at what he's done over his career. It's just nothing but phenomenal numbers. And I think like Luongo and Lundqvist, he'll go in the Hockey Hall of Fame and likely be the first choice on their teams to get their, their name retired. 
Uh, yes, and he would be the first jersey retired by the Predators. There are no jerseys that have been retired by them, despite Ooh. that. Despite the fact that Peter Forsberg was a, a mainstay there for about fifty games. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's bump up to the Vegas Golden Knights. It's an interesting one. They've only been a team for uh, less than two seasons now. Anybody there that you think will be hanging sky high in the T-Mobile Arena? Boy, this is this is a tough one too because you know they're they've got bits and pieces of guys and um, man, it's really hard to pinpoint a, a name just the way they were put together and it's not like you know they have younger guys who they they built in through draft and you know or even had guys that have been there for a long time because again they've only been around for a season you know two seasons now so um, one name that that does come to mind that I, I could see down the road getting retired could be a uh, you know, would be maybe a Mark Stone or, you know, maybe they do pull a Ray Bork type of thing and, you know, maybe the flower wins them a cup and they retire his number because of it. Well, I think they're going to retire his number regardless. You do if, think if so? If he's there through the length of what well, he signed, a, what, a four-year deal? Yeah. Right? Uh, which would put him there for five years. And, and then, you know, who knows, maybe he plays a couple more years there on one-year deals or something. And if if he plays close to the level that he's playing right now, and he continues to be their number one goalie through some good playoff runs too. Mm -hmm. I I really think that this is a team that they're going to look to retire jerseys because this is Vegas, man. Like we, you know, you want to have these like more rafters in the Jersey in the, or more jerseys in the rafters is just a cool thing to see. So I think that there's a chance that they'll, they'll definitely throw him up there as long as he's, if he's, if he plays this contract out, I think he's up there, especially because he was the first, wasn't wasn't he? He was the he was really the first guy that it was like he's going to Vegas, and he yeah. embraced it, and he he made it happen to go to Vegas. Yeah, no, you're right about that. He waved his his claw or he waved his whatever to allow Pittsburgh to let him go to Vegas, and so yeah, I would agree. I think, like you said, it it's Vegas, so of course that would just be. You know, just fun to watch for them. I actually think the first the first player to sign with Vegas was the Russian guy that left after like a week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't don't remember his name. Terminated uh, his contract. Yes, yes. To go back to the KHL, the Pittsburgh Penguins, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin. Okay, let's uh, let's and and then a, a guy not on their team, Mark Andre Fleury. He'll probably go up in the rafters in in Pittsburgh too. Yeah, good chance. Um, Let's go to the New York Islanders. This is an interesting one because John Tavares is no longer there. He probably, you know, if if he had been there, we would have said absolutely John Tavares. He'll be in the rafters regardless of what they do because he's just been so good for them. Uh, anybody from this iteration of the Islanders that you see in the rafters? Yeah, I think, you know, maybe not as likely as Elias Pettersson in Vancouver, but a Matthew Barzell, just the way his game is. Uh, skates very well, speed to burn, and he does have playmaking ability now. Whether or not they, I to me, Barzell's the type of guy where I think you know further on down his career, and maybe even so right now, needs more pieces around him to be you know to put up bigger numbers. Hundred percent, I agree. Hundred percent. Yeah, but yeah, I, I would think he's got a he's got a fairly decent chance of getting his number up there. Okay, let's go, Winnipeg Jets. Uh, they've got a lot of options from Mark Wheeler to Shifley, maybe. Patrick Line, if he can, you know, figure out his life again, uh, <laughs> you know, a, could a Jacob Truba or uh, are we looking at Dustin Bufflin, who's been there since the very beginning, uh, all the way since the Atlanta days? Uh, who do you think is the most likely candidate to be remembered for forever? I would say Blake Wheeler, to be quite honest. I think Bufflin is a close second, but to me, just because of the the point factor. It it's it's got to be Blake Wheeler and the fact that he does wear the the captaincy. Yeah, and he has been there since uh, eleven twelve. Uh, I mean, he's yeah he's he's been fantastic and really reshaped his game. I mean, he he went from a twenty seven a thirty four point season with the year he was traded from the Boston Bruins and turned that into he he's never had a year under sixty four points. <laughs> since that point uh where is his career high was 45 the, the year before uh, he's gonna break his career high i think this year he's he's at 88 his career high is 91 he's just been 
a, a phenomenal addition for them. Bruins, if you think about the players that the Bruins don't have that they could, Blake Wheeler, Tyler Sagan, uh, like a Dougie Hamilton. Phil Kessel. Phil Kessel. Yeah, there are so <laughs> many guys that they could have that they just kind of kind of passed on because of one reason or another. But uh, Okay, we're, we're heading down the, the stretch here. We've got six teams left. The Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, I'll take this so one. So many names. I'll take this one. Uh, Please. Austin Matthews is an, he, like... Here's the thing. I guess again, this is a, this is a team who's the bar is high ish because they don't actually retire jerseys unless a player dies while they're playing for the team. So somebody could come back and they could wear number ninety three. You know, Dougie Gilmore. They could wear seventeen, which is uh, Wendell Clark, or you know, they they you can go back and you can wear any number with the Leafs except for Bill Barilko's. Which I think he was number seven, and uh, and then there's one other guy who who also died. Well, was a Maple Leaf, and so I think that no one's no one's jersey on this team will hopefully ever be retired. Hopefully, no one dies while they're playing. Uh, I I do think though that there'll be players whose jerseys are lifted to the rafters, which I guess is what we're talking about. I think you're looking at Austin Matthews. I mean. It's t- uh, Mitch Marner. There's no guarantee that he's a Leaf after this year. Who knows? I mean, I, I, I sure hope so. I think the percentage is high, but you never know what somebody decides if, if they don't have something agreed on and an offer sheet comes in for $13 million for Mitch Marner or $15 million. What do you do? So I, I don't want to bank on that yet, but I do think Austin Matthews, when all is said and done, uh, he will have his Jersey raised to the rafters. I, I think that, the it, it, it's going to all depend though on the playoffs, right? Like, you're, the reason why Doug Gilmore is so ingrained in Leafs minds, Leafs fans mind, which if you actually think about it, Gilmore was only there for like six years, seven years, but it seems like Doug Gilmore was a Leaf for fifteen years. You'd think he was <laughs> by the way that people talk about him, but uh, you you go and you consider what he did in the postseason and some of the greatest memories, Doug Gilmore, Wendell Clark, they're involved in them. So when it comes to Austin Matthews, uh, I think it's going to depend on what he does in the postseason. And I, I actually think that he's gearing up right now. If, watching these last few games, he's he's showing a new side of him that seems like he cares more about what's happening and less... He, like He's showing up to interviews, really it just seems like he's... He's in that mode. You know, you see it in a guy's eyes and you know that they finally learned, okay, I, I can't care about anything else but this until this is over, you know? So I, I think that he's going to show up a big way in the playoffs. That is what will endear him permanently to Leafs fans because there's still those old school guys who are uh, not sold on Matthews. Very true. Uh, the San Jose Sharks, we kind of already talked about them. Uh, Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe, even though Thornton's not or uh, Marlowe's not there right now, but he will certainly have his number raised to the rafters. Anyone else? Uh, boy, you know, I, I think if anybody other than those two, it would have to be dependent on the Sharks winning a Stanley Cup. I think if if they do go win a Stanley Cup here in the next year or two, and Joe Post, little Joe Pa still on the team, possibly maybe him or Brent Burns could maybe forge their way in there a little bit, but. It's going to be tough because um, right now you look at you know all the the career leaders for the San Jose Sharks and Marlowe and Thornton are number one or number two in every statistical category. So um, you know the next closest guy really in all those categories is is basically Pavelski. So yes, uh, and I yeah I don't see Brent Burns going up there. Uh, I I just think there's too many guys from this era uh, that. You know, if if I, Pavelski's getting in there before Burns, and Thornton and Marlowe are getting in there before Pavelski, it just I, sure. I think you're that's that's got to be the order. Uh, let's go the Washington Capitals. Anyone besides Ovechkin? Maybe Nicholas Backstrom. Does Backstrom maybe. get a really small one? <laughs> like Ovechkin's will be up there, and maybe Stitch to Ovechkin's will be a very small Backstrom number. Oh, I was just thinking that. That's that's beautiful. I'm I'm on board with that. Let's do that. That would be fantastic. You know, if really it was would. like, okay, this guy, yes, he was unbelievable, but would he, would he have been 
quite as good as he was without this guy? No. But does this guy deserve his own thing? No. So let's give him a little corner of his number just to say thanks. Thanks for being along for the ride. You made me better, but I definitely made your career. Okay, let's go Boston Bruins. Uh, Oh, boy. Uh, The question with Boston is, do you think Big Z deserves a number retired in that city? 100%. 100%. Okay. He's the weirdest player to ever play in the NHL. No one... (laughs) I I mean that quite literally. Like The guy is a freaking monster. It doesn't exist in hockey. Nowhere. It doesn't exist. No one's that good and that tall, that big. Anywhere. No, Even and I in think the, now the, the NHL is so scared to take guys that big because of the speed factor of the game. Yeah, and, and no one's fast enough. Somehow he, he's not even fast enough, and somehow he's still he's still decent enough to play. It's, it's When you have a wingspan that's 20 feet long, I think you're okay. But uh, True, true. <laughs> outside of Big Z, maybe a Patisse Bergeron could get his number yeah, retired? Yeah, I got to think Bergeron. I, I also got to think that uh, Brad Marchand, when all is said and done, his his number is going to be pretty important too. No. They they've also won a Stanley Cup. So that that's a that's a big nod. Like we talked about the Kings, we've talked about the Blackhawks, the Penguins, all those teams have won Stanley Cups. So sometimes you see players uh more players from that era drop into the the rafters because they have such a uh you know, this unbelievable memories or memory packed into them. And the Bruins really I mean, you think about who's won the Stanley Cup in the last 10 years. It's the Penguins, the Blackhawks, the Kings, and the Bruins. True. Yeah, very true. And, and the Capitals now. But before well, that, yes. before that, it was, it was really just those those teams, right? So, uh, okay. Uh, we've got two teams left. The Calgary Flames, second in the league, but uh, no, no player who has done anything significant yet for this organization, but... Uh, I, I suspect that to change. Yeah, I, um, boy, there's, there's two names that come to mind right off the top of my head. And I would say first is obviously Johnny Goudreau and second would be Mark Giordano. Uh, Mark Giordano is in it. That's yeah. I, I didn't think of that. The guy's got 72 points. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he seems like the front runner right now for the Norris, but um, I mean, you look over the course of his career and, you know, he had, you know, a, a few injury plague seasons, I think, between, you know, 11 and 15, where he had four seasons of playing. Well, I don't want to count the one lockout year, but three seasons of 60 games. So he had, a you know, a few down years there. But outside of that, he's been pretty consistent 40, 50 point player. And then this year, for whatever reason, man, he just blew up. Well, let's let's say this. Calgary Flames go and win a Stanley Cup this year, we'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hundred percent, he's in the rafter. He's a captain of the Calgary Flames, their second Stanley Cup in team history, you know, and they've been around since the the early '80s. So I, I I think yes, you're definitely about to see him go to the rafters because he was the captain. Yeah, that's a fair argument. Uh, last but not least, certainly uh, 19 points ahead of everybody else, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, how many of these guys are going to be? in the rafters next to the lightning bolt. And, uh, and hopefully one of them catches fire one of these days. Just <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe Vincent LeCavalier is just <laughs> goes up. That would be oh, fun. Geez. Brad Richards. Is his up there? I don't think his is up there. I, I don't think, think it is. I think he left too quick. He did. He, he did really win did. the Conn Smythe trophy the year that they won the, uh, the Stanley they, Cup. Though. They won that season. Every single game he scored a goal in during the regular season. It was insane. Did they really? Every game they won? Every game they won, he had scored a, reg- a goal in during the regular season. Or, I'm sorry, let me just put it this way. Anytime he scored a goal during the regular season, they won that game. Regardless. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so Stamkos, 100%, yes? 100%, yes. He's in uh, Hedman, 100%? Uh, 90%. Okay, Kucherov? I'm at 90% as well. I think uh, they haven't been around. Well, I shouldn't say they haven't been around, but Kucherov just hasn't been around long enough for me yet. Um, But I I do think now with his new contract and the way he's playing now, he's going to get there. Um, I do think, you know, these three guys could all get up in there. If they do win a Stanley Cup at some point, it'll be a no-brainer then at that point. Yeah, I agree. And 
And you could maybe even throw Vasilevsky's name in there if he stays around long enough. Yeah, if if, if they won a couple Stanley Cups and he was their goalie, I could definitely see Vasilevsky getting up there. I, I would guess that there's no Tampa Bay Lightning goaltender in the rafters. So, no, I mean, your best goaltender was the Bullen Wall. Hobby Bullen, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the crazy thing to me about Kucherov's season uh, right now is that if he had no goals, he would still be the 16th highest scorer in the league. <laughs> he'd be and, right between Tavares and Ovechkin in points at eight, 83 a, points. A, yeah, still a point per game player with no goals. <laughs> he, yeah, more than more than a point per game player with no <laughs> goals. Unreal. All right, well that is our show. We hope that you uh, you enjoyed. It. If you if you disagree, if we missed a player, if you think we're idiots, if you love the show, let us know at OT Hockey Talk. Uh, yeah, I think that's it, Justin. Any last words as we head into all the what the second to last week of the NHL season? Yeah, um, gotta give a big shout out to everyone who participated in our fantasy hockey league. I know today is the last day, and I am almost there to a perfect season. I'm I'm right now uh, in a heated battle. I'm only up by like 20 points and boy it's it's looking like it's going to come down to the wire he's 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 pushing me the thrill of phil for that for that first place trophy so we'll see i mean first place or second place would be great but i just to brag about you haven't lost a game it's unreal no (laughs) yeah and and it's not like there's a bunch of you know sometimes you get a bunch of those teams that they stop trying right i mean we've been in the chat all year long there's been people chatting and uh, you know, making trades and trying. And so it, it very impressive season on your part, my part, not so much. Uh, I, I made some, some bad picks. I'm not going to lie, but that's, well, here's the funny thing too, because I have not told anybody this yet. So I accidentally, actually, you know what? I may have told you this, but I accidentally forgot about the start time because for whatever reason, I thought it was an hour later than it was. So I missed like the first half of the draft. So it got auto drafted for me and they picked up Wheeler and Kucherov for me. So I was set there with, with those guys. Cause to be quite honest, I probably would have gone after a goaltender first instead of Kucherov. So what you're saying is that ESPN <laughs> or not ESPN, Yahoo. Yeah. Listen to the, listen to the rankings. You could put an asterisk by my season if you wanted to. Nah, nah. There, there's, although there are people smarter than, smarter than us, or at least numbers wise, who put together those lists. I mean, they're, they're not stupid. Although some things in those lists do get messed up. It's usually not at the top. It's usually in the middle. You, know, you, you right. get one where it's the guy's way too low or way too high, or there was some sort of injury or something they're not thinking of because they're just going off of numbers. But anyways, uh, we hope you guys have a great week. We will be back uh, midweek to bring you more great hockey talk. We'll be talking these playoff runs and, and maybe we'll, we'll break down some of these potential series and which ones we're looking forward to most. We will talk to you guys soon. <laughs>